Hey guys, today I am going to teach you the new Deepstone Creep Raid, which came out on November 21st, 2020. As we proceed, know that everything is subject to change when it comes to raid strategies. But anything I say in this video is based on my experience with the raid after multiple clears. So let's do the thing. My name is Wedge and thanks for tuning into the channel. For the Deep Stone Creep Raid, your first responsibility is to level up your character to at least power level 1240 before trying to attempt the raid. That way, things are easier for you. Most importantly, make sure you are flexible and willing to learn and have fun. Your first objective for the raid is to get to the first encounter and to do that, you need to kill some enemies in the beginning that are blocking the entrance. Pass those enemies, then it's time to ride some pikes or your sparrows to get to the first encounter. Before I go any further, there are three responsibilities in this raid that you need to be familiar with and they are Scanner, Operator, and Suppressor. We will get to those responsibilities when I go over the first encounter. Anyway, back to your journey to the first encounter. You can do this solo on every character that you have and pick up a secret chest which contains some very nice and useful rewards. Yes, you can do this all by yourself. Anyway, to get to the first encounter, there's a mechanic called Shelter from the Storm that you will need in order not to freeze to death from Frostbite. Basically, you have to go from Protection Shelter Bubble to Protection Shelter Bubble in order to survive. As the making of this video, there is a way to do this with no worries. Just spawn your sparrow outside the edge of the bubble, then jump off the sparrow to get inside the shelter bubble. Then from inside the shelter bubble, summon your sparrow and make sure it says sheltered from the storm. That's the good buff. First bite is bad and you will die if it gets to time 10. That said, if you do the sparrow trick at this point, you can ride, walk or sprint with no worries about freezing all the way to the secret chest. The best way for you is to learn the route to take. Therefore, I suggest you practice this solo. Then you will be an expert at this thing. Let's hope Bungie never decides to patch this sparrow trick. But if they do patch this, you have to do it the normal way. That's going from bubble to bubble. Here is a map on screen from the nice people of Reddit. But once you learn the way, you can get to the chest and subsequently to the first encounter with no problem. Now that we got your first journey out of the way, let's learn the first encounter and here's what you need to know for the first encounter. The layout of the encounter consists of a light side, a dark side, and a basement. Number one, the boss you need to destroy to beat this encounter comes in the form of six fuses tubes, three on the light side and three on the dark side. Number two, divide your six fire team members in two groups of three. Number three, you need one person to be a scanner and one person to be an operator on each side. That's a total of four people. The other two will mostly focus on ads clearing and DPS. Number four, once you start the encounter, the door that separates the two sides will be locked. Number five, you need a loadout that can kill ads and do DPS to the boss and also being able to kill overload champions that periodically spawn ready to wreck your life. Number six, on each side upstairs, there are four glass windows on the floor through which you can see keypads in the basement. There are five keypads on each side and only the scanner person can see when they glow yellow. Number seven, you won't need a suppressor for this encounter, so we'll talk about suppressor when we get to the third and final encounters. This means anybody that is not a scanner or operator should focus more on killing ads and doing boss DPS. Here is a map again from the nice people of Reddit. One side side is light and one side is dark. The dark room has computer servers looking things whereas the light room has illuminated pipes looking things. The light room is on the side where you drop the raid banner flag. You will know which side is which once you are there. Now take a look at the map again for a visual representation from the nice people of reddit. However, the callouts that your team decides to go with can be different and varies by team. Go with whatever your team decides. Okay. Now you know what you need to do and you know the layout of the encounter so here is how this works or should work. The scanner's job in the first encounter is to be able to identify the glowing keypads in the basement. Again, there are five keypads on each side that's why you need one scanner on each side. Ideally, every fire team should identify and agree on the callout so the scanners and operators can do their jobs easily. For instance, let's name the keypads in the basement dark 1 through 5 for the dark side and light 1 through 5 for the light side. Again, 
Take this with a grain of salt as callouts can be different and varies by teams. Anyway, you start the encounter in the dark side upstairs where the volunteer operator will pick up the operator buff from the terminal of the dark side. Fallen enemies will come out swinging, so everybody needs to start killing them. You need to look for a fallen with a scanner on top of his head. Kill him, and the scanner person for the dark side needs to pick up that buff. This person should see the word scanner on the left side of their screen, which means they got the buff. Now it is the job of the scanner to look through the floor glass window and identify which two keypads are glowing yellow and call them out. For example, the scanner can call dark 2 and dark 5. Once the scanner calls out the keypads, at this time the operator needs to go to the basement since they have the buff that can open the doors. Once the operator is in the basement, the operator needs to shoot the keypads that the scanner called out earlier. For this example, we say dark 2 and dark 5. Now it's time for the scanner from the dark side to dunk the scanner buff to the augmentation terminal of the dark side. At this time, the scanner person from the light side needs to go to the augmentation terminal and pick up the scanner buff. Just like the dark side, the scanner person from the light side needs to look through the floor glass window and identify the two keypads that are glowing yellow on the light side. Call them out so the operator in the basement can shoot them. The operator has about one minute to make this happen. Now, once four keypads have been shot successfully by the operator, who is still in the basement, he or she needs to dunk the operator buff in the augmentation terminal in the basement. Now, the volunteered operator from the dark side needs to pick up the operator buff upstairs. At this time, the scanner from the light side needs to dunk his scanner buff in the terminal so that the operator in the basement can pick it up, if they haven't done so yet. Now, the person in the basement now has the scanner buff. This means they can see yellow glowing things. This is a DPS phase. So the scanner in the basement now needs to look for that pillar in the basement which is connected to the fuses upstairs. Then identify which electrical nodes are glowing yellow. Call them out like this. Dark left, dark middle or dark right for the dark side. Light left, light middle or light right for the light side. Don't need to use this call out, but you get the idea. So anytime the scanner in the basement calls out the position of a fuse, the players upstairs need to damage and destroy the proper fuse. If they manage to destroy all six fuses, that's the end of the encounter. If not, they have to repeat the process again until they do. Once done successfully, they can get their rewards and move on to the second encounter, which is Atrax 1. Now, here are my loadout recommendations for DPS. Xenophage Exotic Machine Gun is pretty good. Any slug shotgun, especially one with the Volpo weapon perk, or use any good sniper rifle. For adds clear, Fallen Guillotine Sword, the Witherhood Grenade Launcher, the Achilles SMG, any good sidearm, or any good auto rifle. All are good options, but use whatever works the best for you. This is the guide for the first encounter, Restricted Disabled Crypt Security. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you in the second encounter.